Last night, our focus, I, I didn't get to see my head was turned, but how many of you were not here last night? Let's lift your hands again. Oh, wow, a lot more than what I thought. Well, I don't have time to go into everything I taught last night, but I taught on word of knowledge last night, and, 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 and I found out, Pastor Glenn, I was listening to you talk uh, at the table tonight, and I realized that you're somewhat like my wife. You really do like for there to be points. Uh, <laughs> How long is it going to take to get to a point? <laughs> so I'd like to say the main point of that whole message that I taught last night was this. Words of knowledge reveals the will of God for a specific meeting, occasion. And in the revelation of what he wants to do, because it reveals the certain conditions he's showing other people, when people understand that, it causes them to come into a greater measure of faith or sometimes even into receiving the gift of faith which is God's faith not your own it's, it's, it's a faith or it's a faith he created in you put it that way and, um, and, and just talked about the importance of words of knowledge so that when words of knowledge were given later in the service there'd be more faith to receive and we even talked about you could I mean if you really understand it you can get healed just by the word of knowledge before there's a prayer and that happened last night. Um, so tonight, and I mentioned that uh, during the, this week, I wanted to talk about different things that helps increase faith or the atmosphere of faith. I, I like that term, atmosphere of faith, because you almost really can sense in an atmosphere whether or not there's faith there. You really, you really can. And um, so... Tonight is going to be one of the other um, subjects or one of the other things, one of the other practices that can help build faith. And, I would, I would, and tonight's going to be the power of the testimony. So it's going to be the focus of our discussion tonight, the power of the testimony. But other things that can help build faith is just grounding yourself in the promises of God from the Word. You know, that's, an ext that's extremely important. Uh, and, and, and also understanding the, those promises. Understanding, for example, like the promises Jesus made in the upper room discourse. There are amazing promises there about revelation and power. And, and uh, so the, the word of the Lord. Worship itself can create an atmosphere in which healing becomes easy. My son-in-law is a, a worship leader. and He traveled with me all over the world one, uh, one period of time. And um, it was really a breakthrough for him. And it's just seeing God be faithful in all these different... We were on, we were on like th three continents <laughs> in two weeks. Um, and what we saw God do was, uh, you know, amazing. And it gave him faith. And he, he, got, he really got an understanding. And one of the reasons for it is he heard the story when I was uh, starting my ch church back in St. Louis. And we were... Well, probably three, 250, 300 people at the time. We, had a, we didn't have a building yet, though we still meet, we're still meeting at a public school. And we had a meeting one Sunday morning where the worship was, was off the charts. Even though we only had, like, smaller congregation, our worship was as good as any of the two churches in town that had, in the city that had 5,000 members. It was just, we were noted for worship. And it was because we prayed for two and a half years because we felt like when we went there to start the church, worship would be our number one priority. But I couldn't lead worship, neither could my wife, and we didn't have worship leader. Neither did we have a building or anything. You know, it's kind of like, they say, where, what do you have for children? I said, nothing. What do you have for teenagers? Nothing. Uh, where do you meet? We don't have a meeting place. Uh, we, we meet in somebody's basement. Uh, it was, there wasn't a lot to offer except a vision of a better future of what it would be like one day. And uh, when we'd say worship is our number one priority, and they said, well, how can we pray for you? He said, pray that God will bring me musicians who have a heart for God, that he'll bring me musicians that would be great worshipers. And he did. Uh, uh, and it was just sovereignly, like on one Sunday here, most of them showed up. And the ones that we needed that weren't saved, they got saved. <laughs> yeah. He who's been forgiven of much loves much. We had some great loving worshipers. <laughs> Saved out of alcoholism and drug addiction and all types of stuff. And some were very holy Catholics. 
uh, in the sense that they weren't involved in drugs, they weren't involved in alcohol, they, had, they, they hadn't been, uh, you know, crazy wild. They were just lovers of Jesus from all different backgrounds. And so we had this one amazing worship service. And this following Monday morning, I, and I'm not a morning person. The only part of the morning I like is from 12 to 3. <laughs> And then from 10 to 12 or 9 to 12. There's six hours of the morning I like, 12 to 3 and 9 to 12. The rest of that I don't really like very much. And, and so, and I wake up slow. It takes a while to wake up uh, normally. But that mo Monday morning is like I raised up in bed, wide awake, and had this strong impression. I want you to know that when my presence is in your midst in worship, so is my power to heal. Well, I, I said, okay, Lord, okay, I got it. Uh, but it would be years later. Uh, and I was actually teaching that we can see people get healed in, in just in worship. And we began to see it in the church. But one time, Bill Johnson and I were doing a meeting in, in uh, um, Dominican Republic, in the capital of the Dominican Republic. And... Uh, I felt like the Lord said, I want you to teach tonight. You can't not teach like you did last night because you spent the whole time praying for the sick. You've got to preach tonight. I, this message is important. I want you to give it. And I'm thinking, well, then how are we going to pray for the sick? And the Lord quickened in my memory that event. And there was this one song that they sang. It was so powerful. I felt like the Lord said, just tell them to sing that song again and tell them I'm going to heal them during the song. And tell them what they're to do is when they're healed or to come up front and start waving their hands like this the moment they're healed to come forward and do that. Well, we spent 45 minutes the night before by word of knowledge praying and we had over 200 people was healed. That night, in five minutes of worship, we had over 200 people come up that was healed. It was like, man, that was a lot easier. Uh, but it was, it's not something you can do just when you want to. It's kind of like, the Lord needs to speak to you and you obey and say what he had said. So worship is another one of the things that can change the atmosphere. Uh, words of knowledge, testimony, worship, the word, the intercession that's gone on, the fasting and prayer before meetings happen, all these things can affect the, the atmosphere, how full and pregnant the, the atmosphere is with the presence of God and the expectation of God's people. Which, by the way, is one of the other main things. It's just the expectation of God's people. Um, and so tonight we're going to focus on the power of the testimony. And... Uh, um, We may, I'm trying to figure out if this is the Lord or not, but we may uh, have the worship team come up at one at some time tonight near probably the end of the, of the teaching or right before we go into praying for the laying on of hands. I think that's when we're going to do it. Remind me, William, don't let me forget. Right before we uh, break up to pray with the laying on of hands, I'd like the worship team to come back up and I want you to do the song, You're a Miracle Working God. And it's been about three to four minutes in it. And we'll stop every once in a while because I'm just going to declare, I believe tonight that by the time we get to that point, that will be a part of the, of the sermon because I actually gave testimony to that happening. As a matter of fact, since I'm going to do it, I also want to get one more testimony just to build your faith. We were in Manaus at the second largest church in Brazil at the time, our third largest church. It had like 30-some thousand members. And the sanctuary would seat 10,000. He did multiple services. And the, the, the ever seat's full. And there's another 1,000 lined up around the perimeter. So there's like 11,000 people there. And that was the night that there actually was also angelic presences seen by the people on my team who were seers. It was the, uh, one of the nights. It was a breakthrough for me to even understanding even more about the, the role of the angelic, which uh, William's going to talk about in the, in the morning in the first uh, teaching hour. And you do not want to be late for tomorrow. It's instead of um, 1029, you still start at 1029, okay? No later than 1030. But uh, I believe he's probably, 
though Will could give you a good run for your money, one of the best preachers our ministries produced. I said that wrong because we didn't produce him. We just recognized him. You know, hopefully we had some little bit of stuff to help, but God was, has done such a work in this man. He's one of the most interesting preachers I've heard and one of the most anointed um, testimonies you could ever hear. And I, I really, really want to encourage you, uh, if you can be here tomorrow morning to hear. It's the only time he's going to speak uh, uh, unless... Uh, I can work it out with Glenn that he can speak the 8.30 service so I can get my... Uh, no, no. I, 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 will be, I will be up working out at 7.30 because I have, uh, I have to walk 10,000 steps or five mile in the mornings, which makes it hard for, for me to be at early services and so I've got it worked out in, in most of our stuff that my, my uh, associate ministers of our ministry, they take the, the, eight, uh, the 9.30 and the 10.30 service, and I come in at 11. Uh, that gives me time to do the hour and a half of workout and then get ready and time to eat. And, and the other problem is to get eight hours sleep a night. Trying to work, trying to walk five miles... Oh, that's really good. That's really good. Well, it will be a mystery. You have to discern by the prophetic gift of who is going to be speaking at 830. <clears throat> All right. It's time to begin. Oh, I didn't tell that story. Manaus didn't finish it. So... That night, I heard for the first time, actually, I did not know that uh, um, Agnes Day by Michael W. Smith, I didn't know he wrote it. I, fer I heard it for the first time in Brazil, and I thought it was a Brazilian song. I, I'd never heard Michael W. Smith do it. And, and so I just noticed on that song, the whole congregation went to another place in worship. And I felt like the Lord said to me again, this was several years, I've only done this a few times, the Lord said uh, again, have them sing that song and tell them I'm going to heal them uh, while they sing the song. And uh, that night, so we did that, and uh, at the end of it, when the people were waving their hands who had been healed, I called for the staff to come up, and I said, we can't count them, and, but I want you guys to tell me what percentage of the 11,000 people that are here are waving their hands like this, that they had a healing of something. Some, some problem had been healed in their body. Uh, uh, you tell me. And they said, it's at least 90%. That's the, that's the highest percent we've ever had. Now, the other thing, we were there eight nights in a row. We had uh, from 10% to 30%. We might have even hit 40% one night. But this night we hit 90%. And if there was going to be a night that people didn't understand, it could have been the first or second night. Not by the time we get to the eighth night. They understood what we were saying. The only difference was that was the night that the seers saw the angelic beings in our midst. Both warrior angels clearing out the heaven and then toward... toward uh, at the end of the night, uh, Gary Oates, who was on my team, came up to me and he said, Randy, hundreds of healing angels just came in on your right. I, the others looked like warriors, big, like, you know, six, seven feet tall, big swords and stuff. I said, what do these look like? He said, 18-inch whirlwinds of fire. Woo! I said, well, how do you know they're healing angels? He said, I don't know how I know. I just know. And I didn't mention the word angel all night to the congregation. But what I did say was, right after he told me this, because I told him, keep me posted once you go on because I'm not a seer. And when he told me that in, in my left ear, I just said, over on my right, there's a bunch of healings about to break out. And then waited. <laughs> but it did. Now you can say, I don't know if I believe that or not. If you got a better 
suggestion as to why we had 90% and the most we ever had was maybe maybe 40, I think it was really like 30. And the only difference was the angelic sighting. And I didn't tell anybody that anybody had seen angels either. But there was a difference. But that's another teaching. Um, it's in the one he'll talk about tomorrow. All right. Three stories. Four passages of scripture. Because one of the stories, we'll look at two passages on the same scripture. And there's only one point to this. Testimony can create faith in people. That's it. Only one point. My kind of a sermon. One point. Three stories. Let's start in Luke chapter 6. And we're going to read verse 17 through 19. And as you're getting ready to turn there, um, I, the, the title is The Power of the Testimony. I stole that title from Bill Johnson, but he stole titles from me. We steal from each other all the time. We've done a lot of work together. Um, and I remember when I first heard it, I'm not going to tell all the stories except to, to, to shrink Bill's story. He prayed in, in Minneapolis, in Minnesota, I mean. He prayed in Minnesota uh, for somebody who had a, a damaged calf and all of the calf wasn't there. And I used to tell it was Achilles, but it was wrong. I was wrong. It was the calf. And so he had a word of knowledge. He gave the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge created faith and the person was healed. So he goes to Tennessee and he doesn't tell. It's not a word of knowledge. He just tells the story of the woman who got healed in uh, Minnesota from the calf muscle that was uh, uh, not totally there. Part of it was missing. And somebody is there and has the same thing. And they say, well, I got the same thing. If he healed her, he can heal me. And it created faith. And that person got healed not by a word of knowledge, but just the testimony that gave her or him faith that if God could do it, he could do it to me. It's the same thing. Then he goes to um, uh, Charlotte, to uh, Manshabda's church, and he tells the story of the word of knowledge and the story of somebody getting healed by the testimony. He gives the testimony. It's not a word of knowledge again. It's just testimony. And there's somebody there who comes, I got the problem. My, my calf is not formed uh, right. It, you know, I had a damage to it. And, this, and I, I can't run because of it. And Bill said, run. He said, I can't run. He said, run. He said, I, I just told you I can't. He said, run. Try to run. And when he did, God healed him. So he goes home. He tells his church, at his church in Reading, he tells them about the word of knowledge and the two testimonies. And now he's given a third time. It, it's just a testimony. It's not a word of knowledge about a calf. It's a testimony of people being healed of a, a calf problem. And there's a woman visiting there who has a daughter in the nursery who's a, a baby that has a, part, a, a problem with the calf and it's not formed right. And the mother says, I'll take that for my daughter. Amen. I mean, to herself and to God, but not out loud. She didn't yell or anything. But she thought she'd go get her daughter as soon as worship was over and bring her in for prayer to get healed. She goes to get the daughter. And when she gets there, the daughter's already healed. Amen. And nobody prayed for the daughter. I believe it was the mother said, I'll take that for my daughter that released it, power of the testimony. So I was in uh, Dayton, Ohio, and I was preaching in an African-American church. I mentioned this last night. And um, um, I told my assistant who was traveling with me, I said, uh, don't bring the camera in. I'm not going to go for healing this morning. We're not going to have any testimonies of healing because I'm not even going to go for healing this morning. There's not going to be any. We don't even need the camera. Just leave it, just leave it in the pastor's office. And so uh, as I was... Uh, teaching that morning, realized I didn't have the right sermon. It was dead as a doornail. I turned to the pastor who had, he and his wife both had doctorates and she had two. And I said, pastor, I don't have the right sermon. I'm sorry. This is just not going over and might as well cut my losses right now. And uh, I just want to talk to your congregation about some stuff I've been seeing. And I just want to talk about some healing. And as I begin to tell them uh, some stories about uh, what I was seeing, I stopped in the middle of the sharing and said, I feel heat on the top of my left foot. 
I did not explain that was a word of knowledge. I did not talk about the relationship between word of knowledge and faith and faith and miracles. I didn't explain it at all. And it shouldn't have had that much power. But then it, after a few minutes, I realized no one's listening to me. Everybody's looking over there. And there's a lot of commotion going on over there. And I preach through Toronto. I, I preach through about anything, you know. I mean, uh, and it's really, that was a miracle because I have a little bit of ADD and I get distracted really easy. And, and you can tell that I probably have that just by the way, <laughs> <laughs> the way my sermons do that. Uh, but anyway, so, but I can't preach. When I can't preach is when no one's listening. I, that really, I can't do it. So I just said, I'm going to go see what's going on. So I walked over here, and, and there's this big black man. I mean, he was like 6'4 to 6'6, six, six, and he was like, I couldn't reach around him. He, he was massive, and it wasn't like he just had a big belly because he had a, it was like he was, he was the same width here as here as here. He's just a barrel of a guy, huge. And he turned out he had been the tackle on the football team. And I walk up to him, and he's, but, but he's just weeping. Tears are running down his face. And I went up to him and I said, what's going on? Why are you crying? What's happening? And he said, that's my wife. Ask her. So I got down there, and there's a lot of women around her. And, and I said, what's going on? She said, when you said you felt heat on the top of your left foot, instantly heat came on the top of my left foot. I'm 29 years old. I've not been able to curl my toes, point my foot. And if you can't point your foot, you can't run. I've not been able to run since I was nine years old. When I fell out of a project and the window broke and I almost cut my foot off and it was hanging by the Achilles tendon and they had to reconnect my foot to my leg and the ankle area. And when they did, they had to replace some of the stuff with artificial parts. And I lost the ability to curl my toes, point my foot, or run. And when you said you felt heat, I felt that heat. And it, it, it was hot on my foot. And I said, I'm going to try to curl my toes. She said, I'm curling my toes. I'm, I haven't been able to do this for 20 years. I'm 29 years old. I have not been able to do this. Look at that. I'm pointing my head. And she jumped up and she ran around the church. <laughs> now, after that happened, the next Sunday, I was in Taipei, Taiwan. It was either that or Singapore, but I think it was Taipei, Taiwan. And, uh, and, and, and so at the end of my sermon... I told that story because I was excited about it because it was only a week old. And I just told it because I, you know, no reason. I just told it to tell it because I was excited about it. I just thought, man, that was exciting, a creative miracle, you know. After the sermon was over, this Chinese gentleman and his adult daughter walked up to me. And they said, this is not our church. And we were not going to go here this morning. And we didn't come here because you're preaching because we've never heard of you. <laughs> but when we drove by, it's like the Holy Spirit said, stop and go to that church. We were here. It was, we knew we were here because God had us here for today. And when you told that story, her daughter, his daughter was sharing, I knew I was going to be healed. Because as a little girl, I too almost had my foot cut off. And it was hanging by the Achilles tendon. And they put my foot back together the same way. And I couldn't curl my toes. I could not point my foot. And I could not run. And the fact that I was here to hear you tell that story, I knew that God was going to heal me. It was that unusual circumstance. that You could read it. This is a God thing. And she said, I had so much faith. I went outside and I tried to run. And I could for the first time since I was a child. She got healed. Not by a word of knowledge. But by a testimony, the testimony itself created the faith in her. Amen. You say, well, where's God in that? You said, you know, the faith of God. God's the one who whispered in her father's ear, don't go to your, where you're going, stop here. God had orchestrated the divine appointment, but he used the testimony to build faith. So 
Those are two common, those are two present day illustrations um, and I'll say the last one for later, for at the end. Let's look at the scriptures now. We're going to begin in Luke 6, and I'm going to show you in a chronological order. Uh, the reason why I'm l looking at Luke and Matthew is that you will understand, because Luke 8 and Matthew 10 is the same story, that means that what happened in, in Luke 6 precedes what happened in Matthew 10. And then what will happen in Matthew 14, you can see there is a chronological timeline. And, and it's important to see this, this timeline. So uh, chapter 6, beginning in verse 17. But the major text that we're going to be considering for the, for the subject is going to be verse 19. But we'll put it in context. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A, a large crowd of his disciples was there. And a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cured. Now, that's a wonderful verse for the assemblies of God. Because you don't have to say they had a demon in them. But they were being troubled by demons. In my point of view, whether they're in troubling you or out troubling, you're still being troubled, but to keep it politically correct, they were being troubled <laughs> by evil spirits. And all the people, the, and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. I believe this event is what would create the faith in a woman who's probably had more sermons preached on her life and what she did than anybody, anybody else in the Bible. I believe that this event is the source. Now, I, I, I can't prove it, but I, have, I think there's strong reason to believe that in Luke 8, the woman with the issue of blood, she had faith that she could be healed if she could touch him because she had heard the story, the testimony of what had happened out on the level place. And when she heard that, that's what gave her the idea that if I can just touch him, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be healed because it says they were all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Now, look in our next scriptures, Luke chapter 8. So this follows Luke chapter 6, beginning in the middle of verse 42. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. Now, she doesn't tell us what Mark does. That she had spent all of her money on doc, or she doesn't tell us what Luke does, that she had spent all of her money on doctors and she was no better. Or Luke, oh, I get it right. Luke doesn't tell us what Mark did. When Mark says she'd spent all of her money on doctors and she was no better. This practice of doctors not speaking about other doctors goes back a long way. You know, Dr. Luke, he left that part out. He doesn't say anything negative about the other doctors that treated her and, and she was no better off. No. But, but Matthew tells, or Mark tells us that. And, and it says that uh, she had been bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the, in, in the NIV says, edge of his cloak. King James says, hem of his garment. Um, I don't know what other translations say, but they're consistent throughout. The edge of his cloak. And immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. And when they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. Which means that she wasn't the only one touching him. Not this time. But she's the one touching him in faith. It wasn't the automatic touch this time or uh, perhaps the others all on faith were touching him, but there's other lots of people touching him crowding around against him but she's the one who had determined her heart if I can just touch him I'll be healed P 
Peter said, Master, the, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, verse 30, 47, then the woman seeing that she could not go unnoticed. Did you ever notice that? What was she seeing that she could not go unnoticed? Now, this is, intrigues me. I was, I'm from a small town, and we had county fairs. A few hundred people, you know, show up. And I'd, I'd just been paid. I, I worked uh, 68 hours a week when I was 16 years old, 15 and 16, uh, uh, when I was in the summertime driving tractors. And I grew up on a farm and started driving a tractor at 9, hiring out at 12 and, and working full-time at 13. And, um, and so I got paid, and I got a dollar and a quarter an hour. I mean, I was, that was so much easier than picking up hay, you know, picking, yes, never mind, you city guys don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, so I've got all this money in, in my wallet, and I just bought tickets to ride the Ferris wheel with my girlfriend. And I felt the bad pickpocket pick my pocket. I felt it. I mean, it, it wasn't professional. I felt it. And I turned around. I grabbed my pocket, turned around, and looked. And I could not find who just touched me. And there was not a big crowd there. There was just maybe 15, 20 people. And I can't find my pickpocket. Why could this woman not hide herself in that huge crowd? That was around him. How is it that she seen she could not go unnoticed? Have you thought about that? I like to get it off, of the, out of the, off the page and onto the felt board or onto the whatever it would be now, you know, the projector or whatever. I like to see it. I think she's the one that stood there out of all that crowd. She's the one that looks like this. <laughs> because the power he felt go out. She felt come in, and she, it says she perceived in her body that she was healed. She couldn't hide herself. You got a better idea? I mean, it could have, maybe she got knocked over, but I doubt if that's the one. But I believe she was trembling from the power of the anointing that came out of Jesus and went into her. She realized she, she couldn't hide herself. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me, verse 47b. In the presence of all the people... She told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Even this one that says your faith has healed you, it's true, but it's not all the truth. Let me explain something. How, have you, how many of you believe your key will start your car? It's not a trick question. Just raise your hand. If you believe your key will start your car, raise your hand. It's true. Your key will start your car. But does your key really start your car? Or does your key activate this thing that's bolted onto the motor? And that thing that's bolted onto the motor that starts the car, you know what that thing's called? The starter. This is called the key. It's not called the starter. That's called the starter. But the key is what causes the starter to start the car. Your key is to faith what faith is to the power of God. Was she healed by her faith? Yes. But was she actually even more accurately healed by his power? Yes. It's his power that healed her. But it was her faith that drew on and brought a release of his power. In verse 47, it says, she explained in front of everybody, in the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been healed. But Luke doesn't tell us what she said. But Matthew does. And we need to go to Matthew to put things in chronological order. In Matthew uh, chapter uh, 10, verse 20 uh, and 22. I said 10, I meant 9, because I'm looking, that's not right. Matthew 9, 20 through 22. Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. Would you say that with me? Touch the edge of his cloak. That's going to be really important to make my point. Touch the edge of his cloak. 
She said to herself, this verse 21 is what Luke didn't tell us in verse 47. He tells us now Luke 9, uh, Matthew 9, 21. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. That's why she touched him. That's what she was believing. That's what she said to herself. If I only touch the edge of his cloak, I'll be healed. Now, where would she get that idea from? Luke 6, the miracle, that great multitude out on the plain, on the level place where all who touched him were healed because power was coming out of him and healing them all. I believe she'd heard that. I believe this woman with the issue of blood, that kind of supernatural faith was created when she heard somebody who was there. Maybe she had been there. I don't know. But then she had seen it. And I know this is eisegesis. Which, well, that's when you're reading something into the text that's not in the text. However, I think sometimes we need to look at not just a verse or even a chapter, but we need to look at what's in the book. And this, that's in the book of Matthew. Matthew, in the book of Luke. Uh, and so, because we see in, in the, her healed in, in Luke chapter 8. Then Jesus turned and saw her and take heart, daughter. He said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed from that moment. Now, Jesus, she said to herself, if I can just touch the edge of his cloak, or I've touched his cloak, she'll be healed. And, and Matthew says she did touch the edge of uh, of his cloak. Now, turn over to Matthew chapter 14 for the third story in verse 34 through 36. And it's really interesting. The, the enemy's trying to keep them from getting to Genesaret because he knows something wonderful is going to happen in Genesaret. And that storm on the sea is not a natural storm. The timing of it is such that it seemed to be in, as a, a war, spiritual warfare coming against the disciples and Jesus. But they make it to the other side. I just want to point out, put it in context. <laughs> They've just had this uh, thing where Jesus was uh, uh, walking on the water because the disciples have got caught in this storm. And they can't get to where the, Jesus told them to go. <laughs> and Jesus comes and gets in their boat. You know, they're there. So verse 34. When they crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched him were healed. That is an unusual request. It is so specific. He did, they didn't say Jesus touched them, which is the normal way Jesus worked. He touched people and they were healed. They didn't say, Jesus, just speak your word and they can be healed, which is one of the other more common ways. As a matter of fact, except for the, the plain, the level place, and the woman with the issue of blood... It's the only place it talks about touching his cloak or touching him. All the other healings involve some other thing that they did. Acts of obedience. Him saying. Him touching. So what they would say, just let them, the sick, touch the edge of your cloak. To me, it's clear. That they had heard the story of what happened to the woman with the issue of blood. And as the story was being told, as it is even in the uh, three of the Gospels, when that story is told, it talks about her touching the edge of his cloak or the hem of his garment or however your translation says it. It's the same in the Greek each time. This specific request was based upon that's how Jesus did it. Now, sometimes you read commentaries, and I think commentaries can sometimes be helpful, and sometimes they can be harmful in the sense of if the, if the commentator has no understanding of these types of things, they can give you a lot of background and stuff, but when this part gets a little... I've actually read some um, 
I'm not going to say which denomination, but anyway. Um, and they said, we are now talking about a superstitious, magical understanding of faith that's beneath what real faith is. And I think, how blind, having eyes to see, they see not. Not understanding the ways of God at all. That this is not superstitious, magical understanding of faith. But it is an understanding of faith is can be created by a testimony. Faith can be created by testimony. When you hear what God has done, it can build your faith for something else to happen. Very similarly. And God is willing to condescend to the simplest level of someone's understanding of faith to move. Aren't you glad you don't have to get a 90 on a theology exam to get healed? Aren't you glad that God can even use somebody who maybe have some messed up theology themselves, but yet they learned how to hear from God, learned how to believe God? I, 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 there's people I would not go to, to get my theology from that are famous healers. And on the other hand, there's, there's not one systematic theologian I ever had that I would want to go talk to about how to heal the sick. <laughs> God doesn't use us because we understand everything correctly. He uses us if we just understand the gospel. Jesus died that we could be healed and forgiven and empowered and all who touched him were healed one woman's story was taken to the area of Genesaret it had such a profound impact that when Jesus showed up they asked him to let him do the same thing because they expected everybody that touches his clothes it's going to be healed. And there was the miracle. I mentioned two things I wanted to share. That part of the message is over. I do believe that that part is not ex eisegesis. That's exegesis. I believe it's catching the connection. It's very clear. And it's there. And it's biblical. What I'm talking about. Faith can be created by the story of what God has done in the past to give people faith he can do it again, especially if there's something similar. The power of the testimony is so valued in Redding, California, at Bethel Church, that the people who, when, they, when somebody gets healed, they doesn't have to be them. They want to tell that story everywhere they go. They've learned how to steward the testimony. And because of that, uh, Bill was telling me that there's this uh, hairdresser in Reading, and she's had so many clients uh, who attend Bethel Church who always are sitting down and telling her stories every time, the testimony of what's happening, and especially about the cancer that's being healed, and other things too. But that she's and, and this hairdresser is not a Christian, she's not saved, and so one day a person sat down who just discovered that she had cancer and the beautician can tell she's bothered by something so she asked I'm, I, I can tell something's bothering you what's wrong and she said I just found out just I just came from the doctor's office on the way here because this is my appointment I had gone to the doctor they just told me I have cancer and this unsaved beautician says, then you need to get up to Bethel Church because they don't tolerate <laughs> cancer there. And I've heard so many stories of people being healed of cancer. You need to go there. You got an unbeliever, un, uh, uh, what I call the believing unbelievers. <laughs> you know, it's sad to say, but sometimes we got a lot of believing unbelievers and a lot of unbelieving believers. <laughs> uh, well, I, what I'd like to see is believing believers. <laughs> As well as believing unbelievers because we're not far from the kingdom. Transitional. Did we get that worked out, William, for the, cru the Brazil crusade? Yeah. Do we have the other one? Couldn't find it. Okay, I'll just tell the story then. 
<clears throat> it's good to see the story, but I'm going to tell the story. Um, several years ago, Bill Johnson told me, he said, you need to have Dr. James Maloney come speak for you at one of your schools. He has bizarre miracles. One of those bizarre miracles, right, is he has people that have metal in the body and the metal, they can't find it. And they, they got movement of where they could not move before because the metal made it imp anatomically impossible to move. And you need to have him. So I, I scheduled to have him in uh, Southampton, um, England. Uh, and Bill would be one of the other speakers. I was a speaker. And, and James Maloney was one of the three speakers, three main speakers. And after it's over, Bill and I asked James if he'd lay hands on us. Because we believe in the transference of anointing. And he had this strong gift to see people get healed who has metal in their body. Uh, from chronic pain or re restoration of a loss of range of motion. And, and so uh, he prayed for Bill and me at the same time. I, to confess, which is good for your soul, I didn't have enough faith to pray for metal after that. And I went like two or three months, never prayed for one person of metal after I had his hands laid on, pray for metal. Then I saw Bill again. And we had a Revival Alliance meeting for all the leaders of six networks in Revival Alliance. And one of my networks, one of the six. And on the way, when we're about to end, Bill said, oh, I forgot to tell you guys. Uh, I started praying for people with metal just recently. And I'm seeing people, they come up, and I'm not saying the metal's disappearing, but it's either disappearing or bending because what was impossible to do, now they can do, and the pain is gone. For the first time, they had a, what we call an, un, um, an unsuccessful, in the sense that they, they still have chronic pain after the surgery. Well, that encouraged me because that testimony encouraged me because I'm thinking, wait a minute, that same guy that prayed for Bill prayed for me. The only reason why Bill's seen it and I haven't, he went for it and I didn't. So I'm going to go for it. And so I, I, I uh, was in a place, uh, there's about a thousand people there, and I said, uh, you know, I just found out God is healing people with metal. My friend Bill Johnson's seen it. The same guy prayed for me. I, I believe if you, that you can be healed. If you have metal in your body, I want you to stand up. Anything uh, uh, metal in your body, I want you to stand up. And, I, and so quite a few of them stood up. And I, I really was full of faith that this is going to happen, to be honest with you. I have to say, I, I, I had a high expectation. God's going to do it. God loves me just like he loves Bill. And so it's going to happen. All I got to do is just step out in faith. And I had him stand up, and I prayed for them. And I said, now, if you're at least 80% better, your pain is gone, diminished by 80%, or your movement's been restored by 80%. And by the way, in this one, 80% is hugely miraculous because I did my doctoral dissertation on this, and I learned about failed back surgeries. And I learned that if you have a failed back surgery and you have a second surgery, if you get 10% better, that's good. 20% better is great. And most people never get much better than that. It's not a pretty picture. So when I'm saying 80, we didn't even count it unless it's 80%. That's huge for this. Scientifically speaking and medically speaking. So I, I said, all right, all of you that's healed, do this. And absolutely nobody got healed. And I was devastated. I have to confess. I expected people to get healed. And nobody was healed. And I felt about this high. I was totally embarrassed. And I, I said, God, it'll be a long time before I get enough courage to go for that again. I was just, it, that, that was so humiliating. So the next church I go to is in Colorado. And that one is outside of the country. I think it was in Australia. But this one is in Colorado. And uh, I'm not going to go for it. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, I'm still licking my wounds. You know, it, it was hugely embarrassing to, to be so confident and say it's going to happen. And it didn't happen. And... Uh, so I, 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 I'm, I'm getting ready to leave to go out to eat dinner. And this man walks up to me and he hands me a piece of paper folded in half. Just, just folded in half. And he said, I want you to look at this. I'm in excruciating pain. I don't know what it is. And so I walk outside and I get on the way to the airport. I mean, on the way to that restaurant. I open it up. And it's a, it's a copy of his x-ray. It's a copy 
of his x-ray. And he's got two bars going down his neck, one at the top, one at the bottom crossways, and 23, I counted them, 23 screws in the neck. The guy's on a morphine patch, I found out later when I interviewed him. And I, I look at that and I said, no wonder he's in excruciating pain. Who would be that? I mean, there's, there's not, it's just like there's metal everywhere. But I said, Lord, that didn't work last time. I'm not going to go for that. <laughs> I don't have the faith to do that because, Lord, last time I stepped out, it just didn't work. And I'm not going to do that. And I came in and Tanya gave me the order of service and it has nothing in there that I pray for metal. And uh, I'm not planning on doing it. At the, at the end of worship, uh, I, I, I get up to, to say what we're... We're going to do, and it definitely wasn't going to be praying for healing. And I, I got up and I said, you know, I just found out from my friend Bill Johnson that God is healing. And I said, oh, my gosh, here it comes again. And I, and I actually was talking about it. And I had a friend there who had seen it, metal healed. And I said, come here, give your story. Give your testimony. He gave the testimony. It's what he had seen. And I said, now I want every one of you that has metal in your body to stand up. And I counted 47. And then we prayed. How many of you are at least 80% better? Well, that's extremely high. 20% is second surgery. That's great. 80% is unheard of. 23 of the 47. Now, here's what I found out. I started keeping track, and we did over 900 people in the study when I was studying this for my doctoral dissertation. I found out about halfway through the study that I was not asking the right question. I wasn't asking enough questions because I found out that almost, it wasn't quite 50%, it was 40-some-odd um, percent of the people who had this surgery, um, it was a failure for. I think it was 44%, something like that. And they, they had chronic pain and they had loss of range of motion uh, when they shouldn't have had. And, but it's like almost 50%. And the others would not know if they were healed because they didn't have any pain. And they didn't have any range of motion. There was no way to test the other 50% if they were healed because they didn't have a problem. Then I discovered out of the 47, we had 23 that were healed. Which is almost 100% of the ones if that cons was consistent of the ones who would have known if they were healed or not. And I was so excited. And from that day on to this day, I've only had two times out of scores, if not hundreds of times, that we've gone for this praying for metal. Only two times that somebody didn't get healed of metal. Sometimes when there's only one or two, we had 100% get healed. But when we had higher numbers, it, it, like the average for the United States was, I think, 34, 37%. The average for some other states was higher, but they, the numbers weren't, there weren't as many in the study. Only twice have we seen nobody get healed. And one of them was the Presbyterian church, not noted for faith in Paris, France, with about 80 people there and only two who had metal. I believe tonight God's going to heal people with metal. I'm, I'm telling you the story. Uh, and, and you're going to see some people with metal, in, in, even in the stories that you're going to see on video. I'm not, it's not the main video that has... I showed this video. It had nothing but people with metal to speak of. And we had 13 testimonies <laughs> In five minutes of people, and one man had 30 screws in his body, in his shoulder, and in his leg, and his hip. And they're, all of them are doing what they could not do before. 16 screws, 11 screws, all types of metal in the, in the foot, in the knees, in the shoulders. One guy in Baltimore, Maryland, he had an artificial shoulder put in and couldn't move his arm around. And I don't know what God did, but now he could move his arm all the way around. You know, the things that people couldn't do, they got healed. And I believe God's going to do it again. And we're going to go for that as one of the healings tonight. And so I want to watch, let's watch the, uh, 
mega Brazil, Brazil mega testimony. And if you have anything, and listen, for those of you who are not here last night, if I let you watch this video and didn't say this, you would watch it and almost nobody would be healed because you have no expectation to be healed. You're just watching it because I said watch it. But instead, we're going to shift the atmosphere. I want to tell you the truth. Almost 100% of the time when we talk about watching the video and tell them that God can heal you as you watch the video, you may feel heat or energy come on your body. You may feel like a trembling. You, and, and at the end, I so expect somebody's going to get healed because some people get healed and they don't feel anything until they try to do what they can. And then they realize, I don't know how it happened, but God healed me. So as we get ready to watch this video, if there, especially if there's something similar or what you have, may it testify to you that what God did, he can do again because he is the same and your problem is the same. And the only difference is what we are expecting. And may our expectations rise with the testimony because this is a biblical concept, the power of the testimony. Let's watch it. I had a car, car accident. Motorcycle accident right here in front of the church five years ago. E o que aconteceu? Eu, hoje eu tenho oito pinos e duas pratinas para segurar o pescoço. Oito pinos, eight screws and two metal bars on his neck. E eu tinha dificuldade para abaixar o pescoço. And I couldn't do this. Mostra. Eu ia bastante. Ontem. Eu fui lá ontem. He's got, Randy, he's got eight screws. Look at this. And, and <laughs> he's got eight screws and two metal bars. And his head was froze. And he had to turn his shoulder to look. And he had a lot of pain. I said, were you taking uh, strong medication? He said, no, I just took it like a man. <laughs> How long did he have this loss of range of motion and pain? Quanto foi, quando foi o acidente? Tem cinco anos atrás. Five, Five years. Ago. years. Five years. Five years pain. Right in front of the church. Okay. Deus de Jesus. Obrigado Jesus. Deus abençoe. Four screws and two metal bars. Quanto tempo atrás você foi? Dois meses. Two months ago. He takes very strong medication to control the pain. He said he almost didn't come for to come for the service tonight. He was in severe pain there. He couldn't sit down. He was, couldn't stand anymore. He was almost leaving. And then you pray for people with metal on the body, and the pain is gone. He can sit down. The place where he had the surgery there was painful. Was going down. She had the lump twice the size of an olive on the uh, b uh, back of her neck, and she stood up. She felt. Você sentiu calor ou eletricidade? Eletricidade. Felt electricity over her body. The lump is completely gone. See here, John. There is no sign of any lump. It's gone, and she's completely healed. No pain. Hallelujah. Glória a Deus. Deus abençoe. She had these huge kidney stones. She had this huge kidney stones. She was in terrible pain during the service. And she said, Randy was saying, believe in miracles, believe in miracles. She felt she needed to go to the bathroom. She went to the restroom and she said she didn't even have time to, to go to the toilet. The stones just went through and she passed all the kidney stones. They're, they're Big. <laughs> huge ones. Mostra de novo pra gente. Impossible to pass natural. Impossible to pass natural. Glória a Deus, igreja. Deus abençoe. He lost his uh, hearing 100% in both ears. The only way he could hear a little bit was with the hearing aids. Who with the hearing aids? But she, he said, I said, but did you recoup how how much percent? He said, Ev I think everything because it's been such a long time that I don't hear. But I think it's everything because I'm here talking to you. I have no hear aids and I'm listening to you perfectly. <laughs>
three years ago he lost most of it. And the doctor said, my case is irreversible. There is no way to heal this. Mas como eu confio no Senhor Jesus, eu But I believe in Jesus Christ. I didn't, I didn't believe in what they said. Eu acreditei que uma hora ele opera esse milagre que aconteceu. I believe that he would do this miracle for me one time or another. Até mesmo porque o tempo dele não é o meu tempo. Because I know his time is not my time, but I believe tonight. Ah, I'm he said, Can, do you realize this? I'm talking to you both and I'm not wearing the hearing aids. Now, did he feel anything or did just all of a sudden his ear, his hearing voltando Eu tô voltando pro planeta Terra, porque He's, eu ainda tô longe. He said, I couldn't, I can't explain you because it's like I, I, I went out, I, I went somewhere else and then I still come back, <laughs> I'm still coming back, so I can't really explain what happened, but I, I'm I'm still digesting what happened. So, this baby uh, had a big tumor here. Mike, uh, how much larger would you say it was? Because I wasn't there when you, you it saw it. Least six, it was at least 60 to 70% larger than, than what it was. Yeah. She's saying it's 80% uh, smaller. Yeah, and then you prayed. How did you pray? I just began declaring in the name of Jesus for the tumor to dry up and die. And right before your eyes? Right before my eyes, I could feel it go underneath my hand, wow. feel it shrink. Wow, wow, wow. And she said she's feeling heat, yes. the baby's hot, she's trembling, feeling the presence of God, and the tumor is almost gone. She said only 20%, but we're declaring 100% in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, you get in this? Yeah. We've got, we have Rosanna. We have Rosanna oh, here. Jesus. After 20 years, she lost 20 years ago she lost this eye. And Jesus is she, you can see a scar here, a scar there. She totally lost it. It was just scar tissue. And and now abre bem grande assim, Rosanna. Isso. You can see the pupil being formed in the back of the white. And the, and the color, it was really white before, but now you can see the color forming. The, the pupil has been formed, a new one. <laughs> Hallelujah. And she's, and, and the, uh, the eye was much smaller. Sun, it, eye was very small. It wasn't for, it was sunk way back in the back, and she had a, a, a glass eye over it to make it stick out, look normal. She had this. She had this instead of an eye there. Yeah. And now? He do, she doesn't need it. She, this is this was in the socket. How how far back it went? It was way back, and this was covering it. Yeah. And now look at that. Wow. I mean that's going up. Rosan, Jesus está fazendo um milagre. This woman has from the knee down to here a bar and 12 screws. She has to walk of crutches all the time. She. Hey, ready? She couldn't bend her knee. She could not bend her knee when she came here. I'm not doing this. Something's bending her and she's not doing it. It's like there's a power bending her like this. And she could not bend that knee. Three years ago, in five months, she's not been able to walk without crutches. Not been able to bend her knee. Like I feel like it's a bone growing here or something. It's burning. It's, it's hurting. It's weird. She said, help me, please. <laughs> She said I couldn't bend my knees. It's been three years. I never I wasn't able to do this. Are you guys are you guys really understanding what's happening? I couldn't bend my knees. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it's hurting, but it's a good hurt. She said it's a good hurting. <laughs> I knew today wasn't gonna be my day. She couldn't walk without crutches. She couldn't bend her knee. How to run anymore? I want to run. I want to run. I want to run. <laughs> Woohoo! Praise Jesus! Woohoo! Que que você tá sentindo, Ana? Que que você tá sentindo? Uma uma alegria, uma emoção. I'm so full of joy. I'm so full of joy. Eu tinha medo de correr porque eu não conseguia correr. I was afraid to run because I could I couldn't run after the surgery I had. Eu já sabia que era meu dia. I know today was going to be my day. 
I couldn't do this. You said that you, you don't get it. The doctor said you're not going to be healed. You're going to have to amputate your leg if you sue, if the nothing changes. <laughs> I couldn't stand on, on the other leg because I had no strength on this one. I could never do this. Now I can, now I can. Praise Jesus. Never crutches, never more. I'm going home without crutches. Amen. When we first started praying, it's like instantly, within five seconds, power hits her leg. And her leg starts shaking like that. And I said to Danny, go get John. Go get John. This is about to happen. I want him to catch this one. It was amazing. And you just saw all that she could do. And she's so excited. And she's going to walk home tonight without crutches. I'd like everybody here, even if you have nothing wrong with you, just stand up in solidarity with those who do and to try to test out your body. And I want you to take at, at least 30 seconds, not just try it once. As a matter of fact, most of the people we've seen healed of metal, they weren't healed until they tried. Matter of fact, in that one video that I didn't show you that was all in one crusade, every one of them is the same story. When I tried to do what I couldn't, that's when my healing came. So I'd like for you to, if it's deafness, you know, if it's, if it's your knee problems, if, if you can't lay down, get out on the floor and lay down. Uh, if, if whatever you have to do to test it out, make room, find some room to test it and take it, try at least several times, try at least for 30 seconds. One man we saw, he tried for 30 minutes. He actually went outside so he wouldn't be distracting. He had 16 screws, two metal bars, couldn't move his arms past his shoulder. 30 minutes he kept trying, would not give up. And then suddenly, full range of motion came. There's just something about it that draws. So I check it out. I believe, a uh, matter of fact, I forgot to ask. Does anybody have metal in your body that has chronic pain or loss of range of motion? Would you raise your hand if you have that? Uh, there's one. Uh, two, uh, three, four, five. Any others have that? Six, okay. Seven. Uh, anybody else? Eight. All right. Now, there ought to be somebody get healed of that. I'm, we're, we're looking for everything right now. Any kind of healing. But I want to especially see if somebody got healed, gets healed of the metal. Because I just believe we should see at least two, two at least, if, if not more. Uh, so check it out. Try to do what you can't do. And don't just try once. Try several times. Now there, this first time I'm going to ask. If whatever it was that was healed. It doesn't have to be 100%. Because we, you know, this is just a few minutes after watching the video. And there's been no prayer yet. And we will have a prayer. But I believe you can be healed before there's a prayer. Just by the faith created either by words of knowledge which has not been but by the testimony check things out as a matter of fact she wasn't healed watching the video the one with the leg but she felt heat and she knew that God was starting to touch her but she's only about 20% better and so when she came up that's when she the rest of it came so anyone here 80% better from anything wave both hands over your head like this there's one Two. Okay. Now, I don't know if he raised his hand for the medal or not. Did you have medal? You did. So you're at 80% better from, the, uh, from a medal issue? 100%. Amen. All right. Who, who else waved their hands? There's a second person. Was, he, was that this guy here? Did, what were you healed of? Lower back. Yeah, yesterday you said something about uh, lumbar. Yes. 
Did you get yesterday night was when you were healed? Today, this morning, you started feeling better. All right. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Now, right before, right before we pray, could you, would you be willing to come up and just tell us what, what was wrong, how many screws or metal or bars or whatever, just come up on the mic and let us interview because it's better light up here? Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you may all be seated as long as you sit down in faith. This is for the camera. This is for the projection. So what's your name? And what, tell me about your, your issue with the metal. Uh, my name is Bob. I had a new hip put in back in the beginning of August. And I've been going through therapy ever since. I had developed some complications. Uh, one of them was a weakness in the muscle. So as I'm sitting out here tonight, I have pain in my hip that I normally get at 2 or 3 in the morning. And I was about ready to go to the back to walk around, see what I could do. But I didn't want to miss the call because it's almost as unusual to have your hip healed as a, to meet somebody who did a dissertation on metal in your body. <laughs> I mean, this is, you know, God definitely has a sense of humor. So it's, I have no pain now. And, uh, now, did you feel any heat or tingling before the pain left, or did it, just, did it leave? It just left. Okay. Did it leave when you tried to do something, or did it just leave while we were watching it, the uh, video? I did what you said. Try something you don't think you can do. And I knew when I stood up, I had pain. When I sat down, I had pain. When you said do something, I sat down, I got up, I had no pain. So I know obedience works. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. All right. All right. What I'd like to do is start with praying for everyone else who had metal. There's a testimony. I want to pray for you because though I believe people can be healed without prayer, prayer is legal. It's legal. And if you'd like to be prayed for, if you have the issue of metal or any artificial material put in your body uh, that's causing complications, uh, it's not always metal. It can be other things. But I'd like, I'd like for you to stand up. I want to pray for you. Then I wouldn't know if you were healed or not. Oh, okay. Well, that's right. That, that's, that's good because if there's no way you can know if you're healed, then there's, really, there's not really an issue or a problem. Though some people stand up because they, they can feel it and they just, you know, hope it will disappear. Well, stand up, get in on it. Yeah. I mean, it, if I was charging you 10000 or $20,000, you could maybe say, well, I don't know if I want to do this or not. <laughs> but, but this is called... <laughs> Grace. <laughs> I mean, why not get in on this? It's so much less painful than a second surgery. And so much better <laughs> many times. All right. As I want to pray for you, and I want you to take 30 seconds after the prayer to test things out. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for Bob and what you did to Bob. I thank you for the hundreds of testimonies we've seen of this happening. But tonight, Lord, I pray for everyone at standing that has had a surgery. And from that surgery, they've had complications with either chronic pain or loss of range of motion. In the name of Jesus, I pray that we would hear the testimony. And the doctors would say, what you're doing is impossible. <laughs> it's literally impossible to, to, to do the movement that you're doing with the metal that you have in your body. I pray for the Jesus name to be glorified. In Jesus' name. God, I, I bless the, everyone that's standing. Let your power go into them. In the name of Jesus. As they 
try to do what they can't, I pray, Lord, that more would be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now take 30 seconds to try, test things out several times. Just, you know, if it's, if it's a risk, you, you know, you just try it. Uh, we had one recently. The person, because of the surgery, had not been able to move their hand past there. That's it. They could not do that. It was impossible. And they were able. To, I mean, they just... Matter of fact, we had this one video. I hope to show it sometime. The, the woman, when she, when she tried it and saw that she could do it, she instantly dropped to her knees and began to weep under the shock that... It, it, it worked. She'd never been able to do that since surgery. Check it out. If it's in your knees, up and down. If it's your shoulder, movement. It's in the trying that we see so many people get healed. Anybody else? 80% or more better. If so, wave both hands over your head like this. And there may be some of you like that woman who said, well, I wasn't 80%, so I didn't wave my hands, but I, she came up and then she got healed for laying on of hands. All right? Um, now, everybody else, there was no prayer for you a while ago. I just want to pray, and then we're going to have words of knowledge and have you come forward. Now, in the word of knowledge time, you remember, it's your responsibility to remember who gives the word of knowledge. And you go to them. I only want to pray for the ones I have words of knowledge for. And I, I will stay till 10.30, 11 o'clock max, because I have to get to eight hours sleep. <laughs> and as long as there's no Randy line. What's a Randy line? It's when there's people up here that has nobody to pray for, and I have a line of people waiting to be prayed for, because I didn't come here. My purpose wasn't to come here and, and, and pray for people's healing. My main, that's my secondary purpose. My primary purpose is to release an equipping and teaching into the local church and the churches here represented that they begin to be used. And so it's counterproductive if they're not even getting to pray for anybody because I have a long line. So as long as there's people here at, at, at least till 11... As long as there's people here and people are standing in front of them for prayer and none of you, all of you keep standing, don't, don't go down. <laughs> I'll stay. But if I look and see that there's no one to pray, they have no one to pray for and I have a line, that's when I'm going to the hotel because that's working against the main reason I came, that you would learn that God wants to use you. <laughs> all right? Okay. One last prayer. Whatever you got, doesn't have to be metal. You want to be prayed for because your faith was increased by the testimonies you saw. Just stand back up. If it's an organ problem, put your hand where the organ needs to be healed. If it's not an organ problem, try to move whatever it is or function of whatever it is that you would like to see healed. The moment you're at least 80%, I want you to start waving both hands over your head. Don't wait for me to ask if you're 80%. The moment you are, just start waving your hands. Now, Father, we give you glory and we thank you for uh, those that are going to be healed tonight. And we thank you, God. We ask you, Lord, that we would see uh, another uh, 60 people or more get healed tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we bless them. We bless them. We bless their body. We speak healing. God, we just declare healing over them. We ask God for gifts of healing to be released to them. For the power of your spirit, the presence of your spirit to come upon their body and go through their bodies. In the name of Jesus. God, glorify his name. Glorify his name. God, use us to bring glory to him. In Jesus' name. Command all pain to leave in the authority of Jesus' name. God, we break every uh, generational or genetic curse in Jesus' name. God, we, we speak the whole systems, the endocrine system to be healed, the respiratory system, the digestive system, neurological system, skeletal system, healing to come to them. God, we speak the 
to the hands to be healed. Ow, we speak to the top of the left foot, that at, uh, on the very top of it, uh, uh, sharp like pain in the, in the top of the bone there. Uh, whoever has that problem in the top of the left foot, we just speak healing to it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Who has that? You have a problem <clears throat> pretty much right there on the top of this, this foot. Uh, who has? It's the left foot. Yeah. At the top, there's like something wrong there. There's a pain there. I just felt really bad pain. I actually I said, ow, because it hurt so bad. It happened so quick. God wants to heal that. He doesn't do that and then not want to do it. Yeah, I see it. So just, you know, if you, can't, if you can't go up on your toes, whatever you can't do, start to do it. I believe you'll be healed. I believe God, it's God's will to heal you right now. And I believe you can be healed right now. If you just try to do something uh, several times, I believe you'll find out you're healed. Your pain will leave. Um, I don't know if it's there all the time or not, but um, check it out. Now, Lord, we thank you for our others that you're going to heal. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we bless them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now check out your bodies. If you're at least 80% better, wave both hands over your head high like this so people can see. Make your wrist cross so people know there's one. Thank you, Lord. What did you get healed of? The shoulder. Okay, good. Thank you, Lord. Thank, and not good that you had a problem, but good you got healed of the problem. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right, you may be seated. We want to take the rest of the evening. We have words of knowledge. And if you have the word of knowledge, you stand up immediately. Last night, people did not stand up when some of the people on the team gave their words, but then you came to them afterwards to be prayed for. I said, I had that, but I just didn't stand up. You don't understand. When you don't stand up, when you have it, it causes, it has a negative impact on the meeting because the more people who are honest and say, I have it and stand up, then the people who see that say, they're hearing from the Lord and it increases faith. And so it's, it, we must work together in understanding the ways of God to cr help create faith uh, uh, in the meeting. Uh, and that's also why we ask you, you know, to, to do this. That's also when people get healed, when people are, are praying, both the local church team and, and my team. When you pray, after you pray for somebody, ask them how much better they, are they. If they're at least 80%, you and them clap your hands together 15 times. That's, that's a sign. Just clap your hands together 15 times. We do that so that people who are staying in line realize that, that God is still healing people. And he's healing them through the lay people who are here on the ministry teams. So I'm going to ask the teams to come up, both from the local ministry and also from Global Awakening. And, um, and by the way, you can get healed before we pray. And if that happens to you, the moment you realize I'm at least 80% better, just start waving your hands. Don't wait for us to ask. Um, and I'll go first. Where's, wait, where's the other team, the local team? If you have words of knowledge, uh, come on up. If you don't have words of knowledge, before we start praying, I want you to come up so that you can help uh, pray. We, don't, we, we want to be able, uh, with, this, with this many people, we, we, it would be really nice if we had 30 on the team instead of what we have. Because I like a 10 to 1 ratio, or at least 20. Um, so if you have these, stand up. You, on, under your right rib cage, right in here, you have uh, a sore spot or a painful area that, that uh, it's not there all the time, I don't think, but it could be. But it, it's, it's, it's in this area right here, in, in right along that rib cage line. If that's you, uh, stand up so I'll know I was right. Okay, thank you. Uh, also, the left hip bone in the bottom of the back, the hip bone, this big hip bone in the left. Now, just, just kind of just stay there, but stand, stand. And later, if you're not healed, come and we'll pray for you. But right now, just stand. Yeah, just stand. And if you get healed, 80% more. As soon as it's that much better, weigh both hands. So it's on the back of the hip bone, near the bottom. 
in this area right in here where I'm pushing, right in there. Um, the ball of the left foot. Underneath the ball of the left foot, you have a problem on the ball of the left foot. Uh, who, who's that? The outside, thank you, the outside left or the outside of your left ankle. So it's the ankle bone, it's the left one, it's the outside, not the inside, it's the outside. Uh, hot, the left side of the base of your skull, right in here at the base of the skull, there's something that doesn't feel right, some problem in here. Um, high on the inside left thigh, way up high on the inside of the left thigh in the muscle or, or I don't know, muscle or vein, or I'm not sure, or nerve, but it's high on the thigh on the inside of the left leg. There's something wrong, some, some painful there. Uh, the right elbow is kind of like tennis elbow. You feel it kind of right through here on the right elbow. Who had that? Right elbow. You? Do you have that? Okay. Um, and then the back of the right shoulder near the end of the shoulder, not on the top, but just barely right in here, in that area right there, pain. Who has that? Okay. All right. All right, you guys? Thanks. Um, somebody that has a, you have a growth, I think it's a nasal polyp. There's some kind of a, a growth in the nose, and it's, it's not um, malignant, but it's something that's uncomfortable that uh, they've told you you probably need surgery on in the future. Um, somebody else, there's a growth, uh, again, it's benign, but it's in the, in, like the back of your head, and over time as you get older, uh, you may have to have that worked on as well. Uh, somebody else, you have uh, like a constant runny discharge from your eye, and I think it's the right eye, so it's just, it's just a nuisance throughout the day. Um, somebody else with uh, the right knee, there's a cartilage issue, and so your, your right knee freezes up or, or cracks uh, or does that a lot. And then um, somebody, you have a lot of stiffness and problems with the left side of your neck from, from a car accident, like you get hit from the side and there is a whiplash, you know, pushing you in that direction. All right, so I got mouth pain. It's either your teeth or your gums. Um, I got a, um, there's a sudden blurry vision that comes and goes, but you don't know what's causing it. It's a blurry vision. Um, got these spasms right here on the right side. Um, you know, I don't know what that's caused from, but there's some kind of spasm going on. And shin splints, especially on the right side, so either bone spurs or shin splints. Um, the lower right side right here, pain right in that hip, lower back. Um, now so I got October 12th. And I felt like this is either a lady or a daughter, October 12th, whatever. Um, migraine headaches, um, especially chronic migraine, lifelong issues with migraines. You got left arm pain right here. It's right across right here, a lot of left arm pain. Um, and then um, I didn't know Randy wasn't talking about metal, but release of metal. And if that hasn't completed, come on up. Um, I'll freely give away what I received. Um, and then Albert. I don't know. Is there an Albert here? Is there anybody by the name of Albert anywhere in your name here tonight? No. Yes. You're Albert. Is your wife here with you? Oh okay, yeah. Y'all come up and um, I'll talk with you <laughs> in, a, in a little bit though. Um, but okay. <laughs> so and then this one's another um, one strange. I just got the word orange, and I felt like God was saying that you know what it means. That you ask God something and you know orange me, so he wants to confirm something with you. And then um, also got creative miracles. So if you're missing like an organ, like a kidney, or you need an organ replaced, or something's really bad with an organ, God wants to do a creative miracle. Came to me someone here with immune system low that is so sensitive to take, you know, to catch fever or to catch cold like really easy because you had a, a sickness before even though you are out of the hospital your low your immune system is low 
Also, left side of the hip, I feel pressure specifically in the muscle of the left, left hip. Something in the left leg in front, like this part. Pressure in the right shoulder, specifically this, this part of the shoulder is more like muscle. It's not pain, it's more like pressure. Flat feet in the right feet. I can, f I can feel the heat in the right feet right now. Pain in the left knee. Pain in the stomach, left side, but but it's more like the muscle. It's not like a stomach ache or gastritis. It's not about that. It's more like pressure and pain in the muscle of your left side of your stomach and right knee in the left side of your, of your right knee. It's like pointing something. And numbness and tingling across your, your shoulders, like all the way across. And numbness, or not numbness, um, difficulty moving your ha a right hand, like swelling in the joint, and pain in the left heel. Um, I have a carpal tunnel syndrome. I don't know if somebody here has that. And um, the right ear, somebody has the issue with the right ear. Also, uh, somebody has an issue with their eye and it has to be, it's something to do with your retina. And I think it's like a de detached retina issue. Uh, I have nerve damage in the feet. And I have an, uh, someone has an issue with their tongue. And someone that might have a walker, that they use a walker. I have a hernia, somebody has a hernia issue. Um, I also got disc four, somebody has an issue with their, in their disc in their back, number four. Uh, left knee, esophagus, the right hip. Somebody has an issue with their synaptic nerve and somebody has an issue with their left hand. And also says somebody that um, has a gallbladder issue. Okay, I have, um, I, I had a picture of this uh, person who fell and they hit their head on a furniture, it looks like a table. And from that they got like either a concussion or some kind of trauma. Um, then I got the words vocal cords. And there's also plantar fasciitis. And then there's also nerve pain. It looked like sciatic uh, nerve pain in the right uh, leg. Then the right knee, just below the kneecap, there's pain like in the right knee. Then I had this, I saw a picture of a left kidney. Then um, there's, there's somebody who has like a, some pain or discomfort from the, from the neck on the right hand side all the way to the shoulder. Then uh, I felt some warmth in the back of my head. So I don't know if that makes uh, sense to anyone. There's like a warmth in the, just the back of my head. And there's shooting pain in the left leg, like on the inner left leg from the shin down, down to the ankle. Then I had pain in my inner left wrist. And there's the Right ankle, I believe somebody has uh, like pain in the right ankle, they twisted their ankle or something. Then the right, like in the clavicle bone, 
like right behind the first, the, the front of the, clav the clavicle bone behind it, it was like a shooting pain, like right in the middle here. So that's it. Sciatic nerve pain on the right side, hernia, back of the right knee, right side of the mid back, right here. I don't know what this means, but celiac nerve, PTSD. Uh, someone's dealing with muscle pain in the back in the middle, right here. Uh, the teeth, there's an issue in the um, back m bottom molars on the right and left side. Female issues. <clears throat> um, um, fibromyalgia. And I believe that there's someone dealing with shame. The Lord wants to break off shame. So I'd love to pray with you. And uh, tumors. Tumors. Okay, I have pain that's in my right wrist, and it, and it shoots toward um, the right elbow. I think it, um, I also have a pain that's in my right knee on the inside of my right knee as well. There's a pain that keeps starting from the right ear, right ear lobe, all the way down through the right shoulder. I also have a left rotator cuff in your shoulder. Um, cataracts, someone is dealing with cataracts. And... There's something going on with the left calf. It's almost like the muscle is, is being uh, astrophied in a, in a sense. There's something to deal with the muscle. They're almost like a spasm in a way. And also something with the right uh, big toe. There's pain there. Dr. Clark? I'll go back to Michael. Oh. He's got words. Uh, just two. One is on the right hand, uh, pain um, coming down here. And the other one was uh, the name Timothy and stomach. Okay. Now, the Lord said, pray for those who will stand up. If you had any of those words, I was like, many of you stood up. Thank you so much for that. That really helps them to know when they're hearing, when they're missing, and to, re to refine their discernment. But if you didn't stand up and you, there's something that was called out, you have, uh, you just need to know I'm, I'm going to pray for the ones that's standing because the Lord said if they won't stand, don't pray for them. Ask them to stand. You don't let them be passive. And so if any of those are for you, then to be included in the prayer, you, you ought to get in on it now by, by standing up. And before I pray, though, I would like for you out of all those words that you would know you can be healed, not so much by the prayer, but your faith can heal you, and the rhema word can release the faith. Check it out. Let's see. If, uh, if you're already 80% or more, just wave both hands. We have one guy here, another guy there. Now, that usually we'll see more happen because I was, oh, gosh, it is, it's people are getting healed before there's prayer. Just check it out. There's, there's uh, two more, and I think uh, you're keeping track of tonight. Okay, thank you. There's another one, a third one. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. A fourth one here. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. And so how many is that tonight? Seven. Seven for the night so far. Okay. Now we're going to pray. Put your hand where you needed the healing or begin, if it's muscular skeletal, to move what needs to be healed. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for these words. And we say yes and amen, according to 2 Corinthians, Lord, uh, where it said, and so the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Uh, so, Lord, we, we agree with what you've said. We say yes, God, let it be. Release these healings. We say amen. In Jesus' name, we bless them. We bless the wrist. We bless the eyes. We bless the ribs. We bless. We command hernias to go in. We, God, we speak to pain in the in the uh, rib cage. We speak to pain in the hips. We speak to sciatica pain. We command it to leave. We command chronic migraines to leave in the name of Jesus. We command that pain uh, in the eye and that discharge the eye to be healed and the detached retina to be healed in the name of Jesus. 
Father, we pray for healing in the base of the skull. We pray for healing in the shoulders and on the ends of the shoulders. We pray for healing, Father, to manifest now in Jesus' name. God, we bless them in the name of Jesus. We pray, let your power flow into them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we break every curse, break every generational curse. We pray for there to be a release of healing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, God. We bless them. Now check out your body. We bless them. The hips, the knees, the wrists, all the joints. If you're at least 80% better now, but you weren't a while ago, weigh both hands over your head. So we have, I'll count this side. William, you count that. Wave for 30 seconds. It'll take at least that long to count. Wave again. Keep them high. Wave them. Thank you, God. Got five more on this side. How many did you get on that side? None over here? Was there nobody that got healed on this side? Or just nobody raised their hand? Just while, while the prayer. If you, if we only count if you weigh both hands. The, one hand means I'm getting better. Two hands means I'm at least 80% better. So, you know, if you're at least 80% better, uh, weigh both hands over your head. I've got a lot of one hands. Okay. Well, that's the only thing. There's one. There's one more, 80%. Okay. The reason why I ask, how many of you are not 80% better, but you're better, put one hand up. Go ahead and do it. It's for this reason. If I was praying for an individual and they said, I'm not 80% better, but I'm getting better, I'll pray a second time, third time, sometimes fourth and fifth time. This, I treat a crowd the way I treat an individual. For me, it's the same thing. God's... Starting to heal people. We need to bless it. Now, we know that you're going to get a chance to have hands laid on, but we want to pray at least one, two more times, and then we'll have you come forward if you're not 80% better or more. Okay. Keep your hand up. Everybody's, God's touching, but you're not 80% yet, but you're getting better. One hand. God, we bless what you're doing. We say thank you and amen, and we bless what you're doing. For everyone who has their hand up, Lord, we thank you that you are touching them and they are improving. We give you thanks for that. Complete what you've started. Glorify the name of Jesus. Father, we want to see things tonight that brings glory to Jesus. So we pray, Father, in Jesus' name, increase the anointing in the name of Jesus. Release your angels to come help us. And release gifts of healing. We pray your power, your energy, your heat, your electricity would go through them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Check it out again. Try to do what you can't do. Check it out. If you were not able to wave your hands while ago, but now you are. You're, now you're 80%, but you weren't while ago. Wave both hands over your head. And if you got healed of a second thing, you can wave your hands again. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five. Five more total. Thank you, Lord. All right. How many of you? I'm getting close. <laughs> I'm getting a lot better, but I'm just not. At 80% yet, would you put your hand up and say, there is an increase, and I'm getting much better, but I'm not 80%. Just put your hand up again. My, this is the last time we're going to pray for this. Then we'll lay hands after we have the, the song. And the worship team, if the worship team from the local church could come, or at least part of the team, and, and um, be able to do that. Uh, what is it? You're a mighty working God? Was that what? Miracle working God. Okay. All right, before they come in, before we sing it, because I believe some of you are going to get healed, even if there's no word of knowledge for you. By the way, I want to go and get you included in this prayer. There was no word of knowledge for you, but you came tonight, and you needed to be healed. And that's why you came. But there's been no word for you. There, there's been no opportunity for you to stand up and receive prayer. Go ahead and stand up and get in on this last prayer. Put your hand where you need it, if it's an organ. And move whatever or a test out as we're praying, if it's a muscular or skeletal. 
Father, we thank you that you, we do believe that you speak to people. And sometimes you tell them if they'll go and they get prayed, they'll be healed. And you create a faith in them. And so, Father, we pray for everyone that's standing. And we pray that in the name of Jesus that you would release more healings. God, we thank you for the 21 so far. But we're asking you for more. We're asking you for more. And we bless them in the name of Jesus. We bless everyone that they've heard from you that you're going to heal them. You've created faith in them. That's why they came tonight. We bless them. We speak to everyone, Father, and we bless what you're, you've started in them. We believe that you will bring to completion what you've started. Lord, we pray that, and we know that some will be healed. They might not even weigh, be able to weigh their hands tonight, but by tomorrow morning they will be. But we ask God that tonight so that you receive the glory. You touch them. We bless them. We command tumors to disappear in Jesus' name. For tumors to shrink under their hands in the name of Jesus. God, like some of the woman, she said, I went to reach for it and it was gone. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We bless them, Father, in Jesus' name. God, as we come into that holy moment when things get even stronger, 10 o'clock, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name. Father, I, I just command the pain and whoever it is that has it. It's in this area of your neck, right in there on the right side. I command that pain to leave in the name of Jesus. I just felt it. You say, How, what's they talking about? These words of knowledge. You can feel somebody's pain that isn't yours. Sometimes you hear them say, I saw it. They actually see a picture. Or sometimes they have impressions of names or conditions. So they come as impressions. You can feel them. You can think them. You can see them. You can read them. Sometimes you actually see a word. Sometimes you dream it and see it in a dream. And so we're responding to what we feel like God has showed us He wants to do. Now check out your body. If you're at least 80% better and you've not waved your hands to indicate it or you've been healed of another thing since you waved the last time, go ahead and wave your hands now that we would know what happened to you and give God the glory. There's one, two, was that two hands? Three, four. Now remember, we only count it if you wave two hands. Five, six. One hand, we don't count it as a 80%. It's both hands. So I want to make that clear so I don't miscount. There's eight more. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That's 29. 28. 28. Thank you, God. All right. Remain standing. And everybody, if you'd like to just stand, let us just believe that what I've seen God do before, He does it. And there'll be somebody that gets healed as we sing this song. So I want you to, with half of your mind, focus on God. And with the other half, focus on your own body. Believing that there's going to be a connection between God's work and your body. And afterwards, we'll ask if you were healed to wave both hands over your head. And immediately after that, we'll invite you to come to the person who called out your condition.